Thanks for coming. Uh, it's a massive turnout. I, I was really, really very happy uh, about all of you coming, including my daughter down there just now. <laughs> she probably thinks um, this is a really weird thing to do. Um, thank you very much for the organizers. I think you've been amazing. Uh, Zach has been on email constantly explaining everything to me. He's probably 23 by the looks of it, and, and he said he's already organizing the third conference in his life. So. Um, I remember when I was 21, you know, I was deep, deep down in some techno dungeon in Berlin, so. <laughs> definitely, definitely was more sex, drugs, and rock and roll in, in Helvetica uh, back then than now. But I wasn't, I wasn't organizing any conferences, that's for sure. Um, so yes, I work for reactive.com. Uh, not .com, really, reactive agency. Uh, we are an international digital creative agency. We are in five places, so Melbourne is our biggest office, actually. Um, that's about 100 people and 30 people in Sydney where I am and then Auckland, London and New York as well. The website, everyone has a website, so we've been around for 17 years. That means we've basically covered almost any industry and any sort of product, any brand, any idea, any uh, sort of trend in our, in our um, careers and you can, you can check it out on the website obviously. We also put out something that we call Perspectives, which is a yearly thought piece where we collect everything from different audience, uh, from different offices around the world, uh, from our tech director, from our even search people or designers, um, and they all write different articles for this magazine. It's on Medium, it's also in a paper version, uh, but you can find it on Medium. I think what has sort of carried me through my career was always to stay curious, and I think we're very, very lucky to be in the job that we are in. It might not always um, have the highest wages, but what we do is so interesting at all times because we can sort of dive into a certain industry, into a certain trend, technology. Um, we can explore cultures and we move on, right? We don't have to stick with something forever. We don't have to sort of keep thinking about the same products or the same industries and we can sort of keep exploring what other people need from us to communicate better or to engage more people or to sell more products. Uh, or to, to reach more fans. And I find that in, extremely rewarding, and I hope that in your commercial as well as in your personal work, you, you keep staying curious at all times. It's a very simple thing uh, to say, but um, I find myself it always um, saves me from getting too uh, hung up about certain politics or certain financial things of the job, is, is that you can, you can still learn every day of the, the year. Here you see one of my colleagues, David, in the Sydney office. This is typically how we work. We work a lot together with clients. We do sit at the same table, we explore uh, ideas together, we sketch things together. As you see here, uh, you see another colleague of, my, uh, of mine, a developer named Pete, and he helps uh, one of our clients sort of understand the idea on their own phone. I find that very interesting now that we've moved to such a quick and rapid prototyping of ideas that we can even involve the clients and have them sit down and take their own phone and just show it on their phone. And suddenly there's such a massive difference when you can give an idea to a CEO or, or someone else who's maybe buying the idea and give it to them on their own device. Um, so that might be their television, that might be their tablet or their phone. It's incredibly uh, powerful to involve them in that way. Another colleague of mine, Gabriel, is working here on something that we call experience map, and that is similar to what uh, Michaela has talked about, something where you really look at the holistic pathway of people and how they traverse through certain experiences. And we would say we're, we're definitely now in the business more of creating on and offline experiences that are supplemented or augmented or enabled by digital. Um, this example here is ANZ Stadium, where we talk about uh, fans arriving at the stadium, having a good time at the stadium, and then leaving the stadium again, and what are the different touch points, the different things that we can do to make their lives easier, or the relationship to their club better, or to find their friends quicker, um, or to just be closer to their stars and, and, and the players that they like. Um, so there's lots of things that you can understand better if you work together with a client, as well as sort of looking at something holistically and not just in isolation. Um, this is probably what most people think that we do is, you know, lots of screen design. Of course, there's digital production uh, going on, um, but we also uh, do a lot of teaching. I've seen Flynn from Tractor Design School is here, um, so we are heavily engaged in the industry trying to teach what we know and thereby sort of also question what we think we know and constantly try to explain it better and also be challenged by our students. Um, here you see a couple of us um, speaking at the Apple Store or at startup spaces. We do find it very interesting now to also move into the space of incubators where you sort of understand how people build businesses very quickly and brands very quickly um, and try to find a sort of a common ground. 
these are all the organizations that we're involved with uh, in, in some stage or other, you know, AMIA, for example, or AGDA, obviously, as counselors. Uh, I, myself, I write for Adverblog and Australian in Front and also Creative Social, which is a global get-together in Tractor School and Soda. Um, this is just a very, very rewarding thing to do, and, and I understand not everyone would be interested in doing that, but I, I find it, for example, incredibly rewarding to uh, get together uh, with my co-speakers again and sort of just understand where they're coming from, what they have learned and appear at places like here, uh, and also meet you guys and, um, after parties or you know, during, during the conference itself. Um, there's always something that you can sort of gain from that. Uh, often, like for example, when I was at South by Southwest in, in America, got to know some Dutch people from an organization that do something similar to AMIA who invited me to come there. And just the, the whole European sort of spectrum is, is uh, obviously very interesting uh, if you live down here in Australia. I think what differentiates us a bit is that we try to uh, invest heavily into research and development. And by that, I mean creative research as much as technical research. Um, we do these uh, R&D days, four days uh, in a year. You see here, um, these are just, uh, how many are there, six, 12, 12 ideas that I've just sort of plucked from our intranet. Um, they're all kinds of different things. Um, for example, you know, how to use face recognition for dynamic outdoor and for Amnesty International. The idea there was to sort of let you understand how much uh, you resemble maybe a refugee, just this idea of sort of foreign and, and uh, close and familiar and sort of challenged notions that people have there. Um, or you see here on the, on the bottom uh, left, um, you see an experiment where we wanted to take shelf space and sort of uh, animate it dynamically so that when you come into a store, you could say, okay, I want all the shoes that are black or that have felt or that are from Japan, and all the shelves would light up. And, and we do this in, inside of one day, so it's really very quick, rapid prototyping of the idea, and after eight hours, you, you come up with something that actually looks quite funny because it's a cardboard box, um, but it still works. So the idea is there, and you can show it to a client. At the bottom right, you have something which is um, our beach breeze that's actually an aggregation of lots of information where the best beaches are. So I understand that is not so um, popular here in Melbourne, but in Sydney it would be a real big hit. Sorry. Um, <laughs> well, Chris was pandering to, to Melbourne, so I had to sort of stick my flag up for Sydney here. At least we got beaches, a lot of them. Um, and this is the idea that... Um, when, when it's you know, sunny, you might not be sure which beach to go to, and because there's a big choice, you, know, you, you want to know where the wind is blowing and where the sun will be going and what the weather is like and, and all these things. Um, it also led to one of these projects last year at the Australian Open, which is a shipping container um, that we did uh, where all the dynamic social media data gets aggregated in this space. Um, and you see here, for example, the Twitter support for players like Nadal and uh, Federer and just really cool animations, but at the same time sort of show people what's going on in, uh, in the virtual space that is right sort of next to the, to the tennis court. These are the four things that I wanna just highlight that I think make our clients great. Um, not all of them would probably fall into this category, but I think the best ones uh, could be defined by these four words. The, the brains, passion, courage, and trust. Now, brains to me means that somebody that I work with knows absolutely everything they need to know about their industry, about their brand, where they want to take it. They understand what people really need, what, what they're interested in. Passion to me means they're, they're doing this because they chose to, right? Then they're, they're not just there because it paid the most or because you know, somebody told them that it would be a great industry to be in, but it's actually they really like being in that space. Courage. We've heard from other speakers here that there's so many politics you know, going on, there's so many committees, there's so many things that are in your way at some point um, that you need a client to be sometimes courageous. That doesn't mean you know, doing, doing something absolutely crazy and just be out there and do something that hasn't been done before necessarily, but to be courageous enough to step over some boundary and just say, like, okay, we'll, we'll get it done. And trust is obviously something that is the foundation for uh, many of the best projects, really, that, that the, the client even trusts you to come back with a better idea, even though you've presented an earlier one uh, that you already liked. Um, and isn't it a great time? I think when, when we work in times where something can be built in such a short time and your ideas can be realized, I just want to make my talk about how you can work with others to achieve those goals. Not only is technology uh, able to help you build these things or scale them up very quickly, but also you can work with anyone else together um, and achieve the most outrageous ideas in a very short amount of time. So here's something I haven't done before. I would like all of you to stand up, if possible. 
kind of gets, gets you out of your seat, not only physically, but also mentally. That looks awesome. I should take a picture of that. Um, that's cool. All right. All right. So here's, here's my first question. Who here has already worked professionally? Is not in college anymore, but really works professionally. You can stay standing. Everyone else, please sit down. If you're still in college, if you, if you don't have a job yet, OK. All right. That's cool. Now, who here among this group has already worked with another agency on the same client? You know, like Fabio was talking about working with another agency. If, if you have, then you can stay standing. If you're not, then cool. All right. Now, who here out of, out of this group has worked with another agency on a client and enjoyed it? They can stay standing. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We got, we got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people left. Okay. And out of you, who have enjoyed it so much and you have kept in touch and you would be able to work with them again if you wanted to and you, you know how to ring them up and, yeah? Awesome. I think you're, you're my heroes and all of you who had to sit down earlier, obviously that's not a criticism at all, it's just like I think in your career at some point you will find these people. Sorry, you, you can sit down now, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. No, stand for the rest of the talk. Um, because you're, you're going to be working in an industry that's exciting, that's very, very uh, you know, very, very um, uh, uh, multifaceted, where, where people come from all kinds of angles. There might be photographers, there might be media people, there might be uh, talent scouts, there might be, you know, crazy technologists in there. And you're going to be working together, and at some point you will realize that it's not always... Uh, a, a bad uh, situation to be together with another agency. Often you, you're thrown together and you're supposed to enact and play and, and you don't even know if the play is any good or if the idea or who's, who's the lead and all that jazz. So in the best cases, uh, you will come to a space where you enjoy working together with these people. Uh, my story begins here in 2009. I don't know if anyone remembers that campaign. It was six beers of separation for Tui's Exit Dry. I worked on it uh, and I worked together with another film production company called Ed Radical. And the person who was leading Ed Radical on this project was Rob Galuzzo. He left that company and started a new company called Finch. We kind of stayed in touch after the campaign. We really enjoyed working together. And uh, Rob, independent of um, our relationship, met Ellie. Ellie is uh, a father of a boy who has a disease uh, named Duchenne muscular dystrophy, DMD. It's a fatal disease that affects uh, boys, and uh, it is, as I said, fatal. So it's a very terrible genetic disease that there is currently no cure for. They met at a charity function. Ellie has founded this uh, charity, Save Our Sons, on the back, obviously, of his own individual fate, and he's grouped together a couple of people who don't have this as a day job. So what they do is all voluntary work, uh, but what combines them, really, and what unites them is they're very clever people. They're very passionate, extremely passionate about the subject. They're very courageous to be out there and try everything they can to find research and find a cure. And they were extremely trustworthy uh, towards Rob and then later to us. Rob said to them, I don't yet know how, but one day we will be able to help you. Um, and then this happened. Uh, Emad, a colleague of Rob, showed me this little prototype here. Uh, we chatted together in a cafe, and he was basically outlining the problem. There's this charity, they need help. And he'd been tinkering around with a technology that was about um, pattern recognition and how to actually write with a robot. And he built this little robotic arm. And it was, in a way, it was kind of the beginning of the project to say, what if we could build a robotic arm to help these kids by signing a petition? That was the, the core of the idea. And it was so unique that actually the briefing was this. You know, it wasn't like there was a long-winded, here we come from, and this is the proposition, and now you have to come with, with a solution. But it was more or less this piece of paper was what got me in immediately. And I still have this piece of paper. It's up on my wall above my desk. It constantly reminds me uh, what great things you can do. The petition signing robot, this was the, one of the first very uh, early drafts of the concept, background and idea and so on. But more importantly, people say 80% lies in the idea. I say execution is actually the other 80%. Often people in advertising, they say like, yeah, yeah great idea, you know, job done. And you know, they wipe their hands and then they don't want to really um, sort of be so, so involved anymore. But um, it is, in fact, that many things, as we've seen with the other speakers, they change a lot according to outside influences or just changes of ideas uh, and necessities. 
So we grouped together these four agencies, Havas, Red Agency, Finch, and us. Um, and I think everyone respected from the first get-go that each one of us was in there for a certain cause, and we knew we were there because we knew how to do certain things really well, and we respected uh, what the others did as well as we wanted to learn from the others. Um, this is, uh, you might know this from, from other projects, Basecamp, it's a software that allows you to document everything you're doing and communicate with the others and upload files and all that. And, and uh, it was very interesting for me when Zach asked me to speak here to go back to this project and just trawl through the old files and the communication and the stuff we had uploaded. Uh, it's a bit cathartic almost. You're, like, you're, you're going through and you're like, oh yeah, cringe-worthy stuff here and sort of weird uh, communication over there. Um, this is a very early draft of the experience and what things had to be connected. Um, very early, just almost like a mock-up of the logo, what it could be. Uh, the most powerful arm was the name that was then coined, um, ever invented, sort of as, as an idea that the robot would write this. Um, we went into hyperdrive in terms of sketching out what this idea really meant in terms of a digital experience. Um, this is very typical for us. You know, we would almost write on anything that we can find on, um, even glass. Um, then you have this typical uh, wireframe stage where you're trying to sketch out the solution on a page. Um, just get there very, very quickly. I'm ready, yeah. yeah. This is uh, Jacob actually Jacob reading the, the copy that we needed. Uh, Jacob decided to be the face the of the campaign, a very courageous body. boy um, who decided that he wanted to front the campaign, and he spoke a little bit of a copy Australia. here. Um, so everything that I'm showing you here is really going from video to... Uh, organizational yeah, stuff to scripts to photography us. because that's yeah, actually how it happened. You know, it wasn't this sort of linear us? process of Take first we're going to drill into this, then we're going to do the design, Let's and then we're going to do the production. Uh, everything happened at, at the same time at all times. So we saw, for example, this uh, video that uh, Jacob had read. Uh, they looked at sort of what he had written earlier when he was still able to write. You know, the, the disease actually affects the muscle so that they can't write anymore. Um, then the idea was to turn his own handwriting into a typeface. So you see here how we sort of pieced it together. And it's an interesting thing because here at this conference you always talk about typefaces that are ready-made and supposed to be you know, beautiful or at least interesting. Um, this is not supposed to be one of those typefaces, but to carry all that personality of Jacob himself. Um, so there you go. It's a, it's a typeface. It's a font. Um, we went into uh, the phase of actually uh, modeling the arm in, in CAD, um, different versions here, deciding to actually use uh, wood on top of it to make it more organic. Um, we used uh, bamboo wood, a salvaged bamboo wood, so it was kind of reusing old wood, similar to Michaela's sort of idea, but for a different reason. Um, laser cut those. Um, here you see kind of the hand being cut out. Um, lots of workshop uh, action. Here you see two of our fellows uh, working on the arm itself and how they combined it. Then we took photos of this arm and these photos then inspired the director um, to write the script to actually tell the story. So here you see lots of photos of the workshop and what the arm looked like. Uh, this is the script where we laid out, okay, this is uh, what Jacob says, this is what we say, because we knew before the project would actually go out, we would have to have a video that explains what we're doing. So sometimes you, you, you launch your project and then you do a case video and you sort of explain what you've done. Uh, in this case, we needed to have the video even before the work was done because people needed to understand what we were on about. Um, again, very interesting, I think, because as designers, you normally don't think about these things, but when media comes in, when you know you want to launch something big, you need to go to places like YouTube or Google, and you need to make them uh, sort of aware of what you want to do, because they actually have grants. You can, if you work for a charity, you can actually get money from them in the value of media, so you can get your video in front of the right people. Uh, we looked at Facebook, obviously, as, as a mechanism here. Um, because in Facebook you can really drill into the details of people who are already interested in a certain topic and you can find out how much it would cost you uh, to reach them. Uh, we spoke to celebrities, so Ellie is here uh, at a charity event as well as here. We, um, uh, his name is Mark Boris, I think. Um, he led the Celebrity uh, Apprentice show. And we wanted to be on that show, and there was a certain connection that we could make it work, so one, one of the contestants actually took Save Our Sons on board. Uh, so everything sort of happened in parallel. The whole um, project time frame was probably six to eight weeks, which was pretty crazy. 
Um, here you see Red Agency had drafted the uh, PR release, and here on the right-hand side you see uh, the most powerful ARM uh, ambassador tweet. So um, it's kind of funny, as a designer, you, you're often just concerned with the look of things, but why not write a tweet so that ambassadors can just copy the tweet and, and use it in their own communication? So I think copywriting is, is such an essential part, and, and Michaela in her work has shown how, how funny it can be and how engaging and emotional it can be. So open your mind for, for copywriting as much as design. Uh, then we went to the real screen design process, and here's, for example, a, a couple of textures we looked at. We knew that the robotic arm had this wooden structure, so we wanted to replicate that somehow in the screen design. Um, here you see something which could be a mood board or something. It's not really a web page, but Gabriel had sort of given it that textured field of paper and wood and color scheme and a bit of a supporting typeface that could work together with Jacobs. Uh, a few, yeah, just photographic styles that we wanted to use pull out these emotional quotes. Uh, the website itself is actually very, very small, and it was deliberate that we wanted to have a really simple landing page where you could just do one of two things. You could either sign the petition immediately using Facebook, or you could watch the video. Um, and then just have a count of how many people actually signed the petition already. Uh, we looked at how to exhibit the robotic arm then in public, and this is a customs house in Sydney where we picked one spot where we could actually go and sort of exhibit it in public and then sort of obviously sketched out where we wanted the robot to stand on a, on a table. Here's a couple of sketches from that. Uh, then the logo uh, became final, so this was the final logo that we wanted to do. And in the live version, when you go online, you, I think in the case video, you see it very briefly. Um, this is not a photo, it's actually a video in the background that's playing. Now, when we did the project, we didn't quite know the theory behind this, but we had seen it in Spotify, we had seen it on other websites that actually people started playing videos in the background of type, and I'm sure you've seen that before. It's now being called a teardown page. I didn't know that, but now there's a theory about that you um, have to give people sort of a glimpse at what the experience will be like and how, how engaging or rewarding it will be um, in that video, and so we, we drew people in by giving them sort of a glimpse of the experience. Um, here you see the live video stream of the arm. Um, we realized during the project that actually it wasn't so good to just have one camera perspective because people could just sort of see their signature being written right there. Um, and so we, we added a second camera just to give you that picture-in-picture -picture feel where you could actually see the action uh, from further away as well. Uh, <clears throat> this is kind of the core of really what propelled the campaign to, to a bigger audience. That was the photo that was taken of your signature and then posted back to your Facebook wall. And that was really powerful um, to get people to see their own name, as you see there, and a little message that um, enticed them to actually do the same and, and sign the petition. Now, I'm just going to play the, the case study as the um, sort of overall result of everything that I've just mentioned. And afterwards, I'm just going to come briefly to a couple of points that I think made, um, made sort of um, key decisions in our project. Dear Prime Minister, I am one of thousands of young Australians with DJ muscular dystrophy. My heart and breathing muscles are failing and my arms are so weak I can no longer lift a pen. Eventually, it will take my life. Clinical trials are the only hope we have, but we need the money to fund them. Can you please help us? Signed, Jacob Lancaster. Charities Save Our Sons and the Duchenne Foundation needed to find a way to bring DMD to the attention of the Australian government, but we needed a way to stand out. Constructed out of laser-cut bamboo and 3D printed joints, we built the world's first petition signing robot, asking the government to bring clinical trials to Australia. We asked 19-year-old DMD sufferer Jacob Lancaster to be the face of the campaign. And to make the arm even more powerful, we gave it Jacob's handwriting sampled from the last thing he was able to write, a Mother's Day card. With zero paid media to spend, we relied on free television, radio, press and online publicity to direct users to the fully responsive campaign website. Entirely driven by Facebook, we used their analytics system to authenticate and verify supporter details. As well as streaming live video of the signings, a photo of the user's signature was instantly uploaded from the site to their Facebook wall. The arm then toured as a public installation so people could see their signature first hand 
prompting others to sign using their phones. The campaign resulted in over 6.7 million Facebook impressions and over 32,000 signatures, with an astonishing 48% conversion rate. Each user clocked an average dwell time of over two and a half minutes. A scroll of over 32,000 signatures was presented to the Australian Government in Canberra, making it the most successful health-related petition ever, becoming the first Facebook petition to be officially tabled by the Senate. All of this giving much-needed hope to boys suffering from DMD. I think I can honestly say it's been one of the most rewarding campaigns that I've ever worked on. I'm very proud to have worked with such talented people on it in, in all these different agencies. Um, creative decisions that we made in this, you know, why so touchy, this whole idea of making, uh, uh, manifesting your idea in a physical shape is really, really strong. And, and you could almost sort of feel it in, in that uh, wooden tactile quality of the object. But also we realized that half of the people signed the petition via the phone or the tablet, which is really odd because we thought it was such a complex experience that you would have to do it on a desktop computer, but half of the people use their touchscreen. I think it's no uh, coincidence because people are more closely related and, and emotionally attached to things that they can actually touch on a touchscreen. Sounds a bit odd because it's still virtual, but I think um, there's a higher emotional quality when you use touchscreens. <clears throat> and you see it here in, the, in that uh, sort of almost zen-like uh, quality of the wood. Taking it personal, if you can, and if it does make sense, that it's obviously great if you can condense an idea and a design into you know, one particular story. Somebody who's an individual and who's actually the real hero of the campaign, which is Jacob and his mother. This is a, a quote I really like from Sir Ken Robinson on the internet. We haven't got all minute. We've become incredibly impatient. So attention span is really waning and it's, it's basically shot. We want to reward people immediately. Here, I've even taken out the vowels because it's like, you got to be there immediately. Um, that means, you know, there was only one decision to do one of two things. You click one of the two buttons, either watch the video or actually sign the petition, and then see the live experience. So immediately you get that live experience. Even the counter was saying, like, you only have to wait two minutes or 90 seconds until your signature is being written. Um, and then the photo would come back as a sort of surprise reward afterwards. Going mobile, as I said, you have to almost think about mobility as an idea, not about a phone. You know, mobile doesn't mean just think about a phone. Think about what it means to people to be on the go or be in that museum and sort of look at the object right there and then. Um, here's a video of when uh, we launched the campaign. And here you see actually Emad's Facebook page, his own Facebook stream was suddenly being flooded with these friends and people he knew who were doing this live while we were there, which was very, very exciting. So I think as a designer this, or as a creative, there's an immense reward in seeing feedback immediately. It's also scary because, you know, if it goes wrong, you're basically sitting there on, on a great idea and it doesn't quite work. But when it does work, it's extremely rewarding. Um, and this, as you saw in the video, we brought all the signatures to Canberra and, and rolled it out literally there in, in this uh, room in the Senate. And we had uh, senators actually uh, um, afterwards championing the cause, which was great. But it also fed back into, this is me and my colleagues in Sydney, in, into the sort of live experience of having to crack these 20,000 signatures that we needed to, to actually be able to go to the Senate and have some sort of, there wasn't an end to the project. You know, they were still like, we have to get here and how can we get even further? And now that we're going to Canberra, what can we do now? Um, and lastly, I think this is my last point, this look around this room and find the most natural thing. It is actually you. I think in, in this day and age, we've come to accept certain things like Facebook as an extension of our identity, something that is just naturally part of us. In a weird way, it's not biological at all. Um, but when you understand that that is how people work nowadays, then simplify the technology to a degree that it becomes almost invisible. Even though the arm is the most obvious piece of technology in there, it kind of feels quite natural to stand there and think like, yeah, of course, this robot arm is going to take my name from Facebook and write it there. Why not? Why shouldn't it? You know, we all kind of have come to expect that that's possible, even though it's quite outrageous as an idea. So my last point was um, to the eight people who kept standing and all the other people who weren't standing yet, I hope that uh, next time, next year, at Sex, Drugs and Helvetica, there will be uh, all of you standing because you have worked with another agency, enjoyed it, worked with other talent, uh, talented people that you would like to work with again and sort of build relationships that enable you to work together and, and keep making stuff together. So thank you very much. Also from the arm.
And if you, um, if you find it uh, possible, then it would be great if you could also uh, support uh, the charity that we work for, Save Our Sons, uh, which are obviously still working very hard towards the cause. So thank you very much.